But I, I would just like to give uh, some recognition to Howard. You know, he has an awful lot to put up with behind the scenes. He does a quiet but fantastic job steering the ship very steadily. Um, and again, you know, fresh challenges come up for the club all the time. And a lot of this work is never really recognised. It goes on behind the scenes. People don't necessarily need to know always what goes on. But I would just like to personally thank Howard for all of the hard work he's done. Uh, really, you know, steering the ship and showing great leadership this year for the club. So well done, Howard. I, I thought I'd just start with uh, saying what a great afternoon it's been for anyone who's down. What a, what a lot of fun. Uh, I want to thank the players for really getting to the spirit of it. And uh, thank Hillsy again for, for a fantastic organisation. One thought I had, though, I, we've all believed that we've got the best manager in non-league football, but Gordon, Jimmy Hammond, up front, what, Fantastic. <laughs> Man of the match today, you've been playing him out of position all these years. That's why you're a good chairman. Obviously there's no microphone. Um, I thought that, um, actually what I wanted to start with was that uh, the last couple of weeks, actually, um, we've had this, uh, this morning, last Saturday morning, uh, we had youth tournaments down here. Uh, a few people have been down here and seen it. A couple of weeks ago, many of the first team squad went up uh, and trained with some of the kids. And, and I have to say, it's been fantastic. All credit to Jay and, and to the youth organisation. Uh, but it's been fantastic. And, and just watching a lot of it, it's just made me remember, I think, why we like football, why we first like football. Because it's easy to forget when you're involved in you, you know, all, this, all the stuff you have to deal with um, and every result counting. Actually, when you see the joy on the face of the kids, when you saw the joy on the face of some of the players when they were doing the training, uh, it, it really was a, a great uh, sort of just uh, opportunity to remember what a great game football is and how lucky we are to be part of it. So, you know, just brilliant uh, to see that youth and first team and everyone getting uh, involved. Uh, and uh, again, thanks to the players for that. But the joy, the love of the game, the joy of the game, yeah, we've seen that many times this season. Anyone who's at Chelmsford saw Elliot's goal, fantastic. Love of the game. Jeff's goals, St Albans and elsewhere. Uh, Sean's free kick the other day. You know, anyone who's at Maidenhead. I sometimes think when you, if you bring a, a friend or you bring someone to a game, it's always high risk. I brought a couple of people to one of the Bath games here. It was pretty turgid. Um, but, you yeah, know, anyone who came to Maidenhead last year would be converted instantly. It was a fantastic day and, uh, you know, we just, we've had several of them. There's been far more highlights than lowlights. Our target was really, uh, first of all, to escape relegation, consolidation, all that sort of thing. 42 points is what we set ourselves as a target. To get 54, I think, was, uh, was fantastic. I think we finished 12, haven't we? Which is, which is a really amazing effort, and especially so given, given that start that we had. Albeit that start where the first game, we were in front till injury time, the second game, the third game, we could easily have had a few more points as well. So a great effort by everybody this season. And of course the home form has been more disappointing, but the crowds, despite that, and remember last year we had a championship winning uh, season, 720 we've averaged, up another 5%. It's a phenomenal achievement. Every single year that we've been here at Rice our average attendances are going up, um, which no other club nearby, no other club almost anywhere can play. It is an amazing achievement, and everyone here has some part to play in that. So we must be doing something right, you know, and you know, there's a lot more kids coming. Um, we, we launched our sort of strategy and vision, if you like, uh, in January. And, uh, and a lot of people have, have started to sort of enter into the discussion and start talking about the club that they want and we'll have a lot more of that and that's been, <coughs> that's been really good. But in one of those discussions someone reminded me that actually when we think about our supporter base, you know when we came here we were averaging about 300. Um, so there's more new supporters than that sort of old hardcore. So that's, that's quite an interesting sort of thing to, to ponder on for a minute. So what our fans collectively want and what, for our future for this club yeah, it's important that we know what, uh, you know, not just what those who have died in the wall for the last 25, 30 years plus, but also, you know, people who are now finding Wildstone and, and joining that family and, and coming. It's been, again, another amazing uh, season in that respect. Another aspect of that sort of strategy uh, work has been um, people who have come forward to get involved. We are going to announce in the next few days, but he's here tonight and I'm asking to stand up, a new commercial manager for the club, uh, Mike Bandry. Where are you, Mike? 
Mike's over there. So Mike is, we'll be introducing Mike to lots of people. Um, we're also bringing in um, other people's guy, um, some of you will know, called Mark Winkworth, who's going to work with Mike. Um, we're bringing in a group of guys who are going to work more on the marketing side. Craig is spearheading our social media drive. So we've got a lot of activity going on. Uh, and that's that's quite exciting. That has to be successful. We've, we're putting a lot of store in that to bring in more money to the club, to bring in more opportunity that uh, we're going to be able to, uh, again, remain competitive on the field and do the things we want to off the field. And where I started was to talk about youth, and youth and community is a big thing about our future. We've got all these new fans, many of them, as I say, are, are local, or they're kids, they're families, and we've got to build on that as well, and, and that's, that's where we're going to continue to grow. Everyone, I've already been asked a few times tonight how we're doing with the lease. Obviously, that's a big thing for us. We are making progress. We are in a better place than we've been at any time since we've been here. We've still got a way to go. I'm feeling still pretty confident. The relationship with the landlords is better than it's ever been. None of that counts for anything until we've obviously got to where we want. So when we've got some news, we'll share it. Um, but please rest assured we're doing all we can and things are moving in the right direction. But in terms of being prepared and looking to the future, you know, we started, you know, we weren't that far off the playoffs. So we started to say, well, next season, season after, whenever it is, if we were there, what does it mean? And I have to say, having looked at the um, A grade uh, requirements, it's pretty scary um, what you need because yeah, we've spent a lot of money on floodlights, on uh, some of the work we've had to do with the new turnstile, for example, to get to the B grade. But we have to think and we have to look at that and, and start to have a plan. So we, we, are, we are looking to be very prepared. But the, the important thing is that we are competitive. You know, our, our ambition will be to do well again next season, to stay competitive. Um, you know, I think that as a football fan, as a football player, anyone involved, you want to win every single game. So that's the mentality we'll be taking, and that's what we'll be able to do. But we will certainly uh, look to, to be as competitive as we can be uh, in the conference next year, or well, the National League South, as it's now called. Um, but we're not going to stand still. We're not going to think we're there now. Uh, and it, you know, I suppose we always say it only ever gets tougher next year. Lawrence and Jez already had deserved recognition. I just want to add my thanks again, Paul, Paul's awards. Lawrence done a phenomenal job uh, with, the, with the video and we're looking at how we can uh, follow that next year. Uh, and Jez, as I've said already, um, although Jez's contribution on the field today was memorable, I think. <laughs> and it's paying for it now. <laughs> I think Nick said at the beginning, you know, the management team, every year we, we say thank you to the management team, and rightly so, the time that they spend, the decisions that they make, uh, and everything they do around this club helps this club to go forward. You know, we have one, not only, as we say, one of the best management managers and management teams around, but most respected. There's no one in football that has a bad word for Gordon and for the, for the club, and, uh, and he does a phenomenal job. So, guys, thank you again for everything you've done this season. It's never fair just to pick out players, but why not? Um, Northy, what a season he's had. Um, how many penalties he's had to face? <coughs> must be a record. Uh, but a phenomenal oh, sure. effort. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think some of the centre backs, some of the defenders owe him a few drinks tonight. Um, Jeff's also been called up, this, and, and I have to say, I think my, my own football career, which isn't very much, but running down the right hand side with Jeff sort of creeping up on me, hearing the ground tremor, tremor was something I'll remember. But the guys, I mean, collectively, have just done a fantastic job. You know, and, and I think, you know, when you see some of the video, you see some, well, not, maybe not that. Wrong <laughs> game! But, uh, you know, some of the football we've seen, some of the goals we've seen, some of the performances, and we'll see some of the video shortly, uh, has just been fantastic. Um, I want to thank the board of directors, my board who, uh, again, people don't, uh, as much as Nick said, you know, we work tirelessly, many, many hours, people don't really see and, and they don't go looking for thanks for what they do, but thank you guys, you just, uh, again, the club wouldn't be where it is without the people who do the jobs that they do off the field, and uh, anyone who thinks that this club isn't in the best place it's been for many, many years, uh, happy to have a chat with them later on. Mm. Uh, one other guy I think deserves a bit of a mention today. Um, 
Because one of the things I always say to people is at Wildstone, we have stuff that happens to us, a trophy run recently, a couple of years back, and yeah, there's always something going on here. There's always something that no other club could dream of. And so a social media phenomenon that we've experienced and, and we've lived through, um, I think, again, none of us will have ever seen the like of it. But I have to pay a lot of tribute to Gordon Hill, um, our Wildstone Raiders.